old style classics baseball cards got a lot of ground to cover today uh, just a lot of hubbub of love and other stuff um, thanks for joining me uh, lots of news but hey if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing liking leave some comments getting comments uh, getting uh, for some subscribers recently I think due to some VRs uh, not a whole lot of likes but anyways and then I got some shout outs to do um, but if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing and liking and all that so today is February 20th 2024 and I'm busy at work right now working overtime but I did pick up two things in the mail today and one of them's pretty cool and that's this from eBay I've been waiting a long time for this though so I don't know what happened with that guy and um, but then I also got something bad folks something bad uh, dag nabbit uh, brother <laughs> god darn it now the problem with this is is they want me to go in the week this service week for my job they want me to come in the week of the 4th of March well that's actually why we're working all this overtime is because the thing that I'm working on happens March 4th and 5th and 6th and all that so maybe I can get out of it because of that um, so <laughs> get one good thing like a couple good things to be honest with you and then of course somebody's gonna rain on, rain on your parade which it's actually been raining a lot out here the last uh, couple days and um, so well there you go I'll see what happens with that that's kind of funny with with the good comes the bad right so anyhow <clears throat> um so i got these cards here i'm gonna probably do some of the oddball stuff that i picked up but just showing you these so you have something to look at oh before i forget there you go cardboard nerd it made it into this video as well I'm not going to show you the stuff that I've showed multiple times in the last few days, but I will talk about it. So I got a bunch of pre-war stuff. Um, the um, Hassan triple folder, the Cubbies, Frank Chance, um, the Tigers, um, and brown background. What is that? A T207, I believe. And the Obac. I think that's T202. Uh, anyways, and so then I showed last night all my pre-war stuff in one video. And I got some comments and other stuff in the last few days that I haven't got around to because I just wanted to show those cards. Um, but I think I left off last time shouting out somebody liked your reply they're pretty cool I don't know who someone is but someone liked your reply that was funny uh, anyways uh, I think I talked about collector's dream thank me for sharing the local card shop then I had got a new subscriber from peacemaker so thank you peacemaker and then vintage card Steve two days ago great Covington card fantastic pre-war share enjoy and thanks for the sharing with us so I'll try to get back to these folks. Um, planning on um, still didn't get a lot of sleep last night, folks. So I'm gonna do this video real quick. Well, quick in my terms, <laughs> which is never quick. And then um, upload this, and me and my wife will watch something, and I'll go to bed early tonight, hopefully, because uh, I'm beat. Um, so vintage cards responded and then Stukes baseball cards and curiosity commented great Stovall card and triple folder basement card collector commented man I love those Dawson cards the booklet with Sandberg 
is awesome. The Sparkly Dawson is great too. Responding to my video with the Cypher Alan and Ginter card on it. And um, I think my Topps Mega Box eBay pickups and some other Dawson stuff. And then AO Vintage Oddball Cards Rick commented, good stuff. Love the pre war cards. Thanks for sharing. That was last night. So thanks, Rick. He's another Bay Area guy that I don't know personally, and we've only interacted on these um, um, comments a few times, but thanks, Rick. Uh, Cloudsy420 UFC cards. He, he tends to comment a lot, so thanks, Cloudsy. Uh, random uh, good stuff, bud. Thank you. Um, I got a heart. From John P. Collects Cards on my comment on his page. I'm going to skip this next one and get to a collector's dream commented. Awesome st stuff. Thanks for sharing on my, my pre-war stuff. Uh, somebody liked your comment. Um, yeah, I was talking with... Um, Um, let's see, I commented, somebody liked your comment, I feel like it's hard to get traction, especially if you don't collect the same stuff everyone else does. I felt a void, and I'm trying to fill it with my kind of videos, which, an interesting, um, this is me talking, interesting side effect is the cure for insomnia, <laughs> laugh out loud, that's me being self-deprecating. Just keep doing what you do, in my opinion, because that's kind of what I do. People are I'm into Allen and Ginter and the old style cards that are new, and and uh, this other guy he's trying to he he's trying to start up something, and I'm like, oh, not everyone does vintage, not everyone does pre-war. Some people like '80s, some people like Pokemon and all that. Just do whatever it is you want, because that's why I started up my channel because. You know, I like vintage stuff, but I wasn't seeing the kind of videos I wanted to see with like Alan and Ginter and Gypsy Queen, these kind of things. And so instead of complaining about it and not having anyone do it but breakers, you know, start your own video. So this is um, Vintage Card Steve8582 that I was discussing this with. And he said, thanks, man, for sure. Just going to stay my path. Just appreciate all the support that I have coming in to see my collection and hear my thoughts. Thanks for watching and commenting. So, no problem, dude. Um, sorry if I don't get to watch as much because I'm putting a lot of stuff out. I'm pretty busy right now at work. So, for everybody out there that I don't uh, comment as much and all that, it's because it's the busiest time of the year for me. So, until... <clears throat> later this year somebody liked my reply thanks man hawk fans unite to bring the greatness of andre to the masses so that was um um uh, i think basement card collector again so i interacted with him i believe he's a dawson fan too all right, folks, and I think I just got a new comment, but computer's going slow, so sorry, Dag Nabbit. Uh oh. Sorry, everybody. The computer's going a little slow, and click the wrong button here. Sorry. <clears throat> Enjoy those milk bone cards and that cover card for the Denny's thing. Okay, that was three hours ago. But anyway, so um, aside from that, I did my first VR for John P. Collects Cards, his $10,000 card challenge. And um, I did a VR for him a couple weeks ago. And now, I maybe because I don't know if I have my notification set right or whatever, but um, that ended on Valentine's Day. Of course, I was busy Valentine's Day. But he ended his um, challenge then and posted a video 
of the winners and so I got a message from him uh oh people hello everybody that's my beautiful <laughs> wife hi Pamela wearing her Stevie Nick shirt right now it's a double trouble for me around here So John P collects cards, um, VR challenge. So I didn't even know to, that his um, winner's um, video or whatever talking about his VR was even up for a few days. And I just happened to be posting that video last night, looked and saw that I was mentioned in a video. So I watched that video and uh, a couple things about that video is um, he was talking about like one of the Ty Cobbs is one of the green back is the one I chose. And then um, the Annie Oakley was the one of the cards that I chose that he talked about, thought it was a good pick. And then the Danica Patrick, he kind of was, um, um, I was like, wow, somebody picked the Danica Patrick, but I think it's a short print. So yes, it is a short print of 2006 Allen and Ginter. Uh, it's one of the uh, one of one box loaders that they had 15 different people do a personalized um, postcard, and uh, so she has a one of one autographed box loader postcard from Allen and Ginter 2006, and it's never showed up. And based on the prices of her mini framed autograph card, I figure that one's eight nine times more valuable. Um, since it's never been seen and I've only seen one of the 15 one-on-ones that are out there you know you got like Mike Tyson and Hulk Hogan and all these different people who were in that set that had a one-on-one for just those postcards and um, so just my estimate was that it would be around up to ten thousand dollars so that's why I chose that um, because she was my grail white whale card that I was hunting for I know it's not baseball but he didn't say it had to be baseball so he thought that was interesting anyway so he spun the wheel uh, for the 22 people who responded to his challenge for a $25 gift card for eBay and the second place was a $15 eBay gift card and I won <laughs> so I won the $25 gift card so and um, sent him an email and he responded today and then I responded to him and he was like oh I was just sending you the gift card because he was busy today and then I got it like a minute later so thanks John P collects cards and I told him I'll shout him out in the video uh, for whatever card that I do end up buying with that gift card but I have something in mind um, so that'll be a good chunk of that card that I want to get and uh, so thanks for John P. Collects Cards and all the other people who congratulated me and the um, um, uh, Reindeer Studios took second place. So I've seen a lot of his stuff on people's videos. Um, <clears throat> but all those people who congratulated us, thank you. I appreciate that. And so that's super neat. So I won that last night. I got those pre-war cards got a lot of comments from people especially some of the um, bigger people in the community like Rick Vintage Oddball and all you guys thank you and then of course I end up getting jury duty so you can't have the good without the bad right folks and then I'm like looking at John P collects cards page right now and he has a VR for Hodges 1455 pictures who could hit and he's showing on his video thumbnail a Don Newcomb card and I just talked to the guy at Stevens Creek's sports cards about how I was supposed to meet him in high school and uh, middle school but he didn't show up but I always was a fan of Don Newcomb ever since then and I don't have a Don Newcomb card and I want to get one and lo and behold there it is right here on the screen but the guy said he'd keep his eyes peeled for me but that's not the card I'm thinking about getting folks it's a really beautiful card there's your clue all right, folks, so <clears throat> there's 15 minutes of that. So I'm not going to open this because I looked at the set and uh, there's no Andre Dawson in this year. Um, let's see, I got some new glasses too, folks, at uh, Costco last night. Some str stronger ones, thinking that might help me 
look from the card to the screen, but actually I think it's the opposite, but they're good for looking at uh, some of these smaller numbers because I think I was using like twos on these um, readers, but these are threes. So this is a 94 Upper Deck Denny's limited edition set. So no Dawson in there, so I'm not going to open those. Uh, so, but I just thought you might want to see that. There we go. We got Jim Abbott on the back. So, the great Jim Abbott. And all he overcame to be a um, pitcher. Only having one uh, one hand. And you got Paul Molitor here on the Milk Bone card. And these are MSAs. And I'm a big fan of MSA, you know. And then on the back, Ron McDonald. Ben McDonald. Hall of Famer Barry Larkin there in the front with Kino and Roscoe Pico train and on the back you got Cal Ripken Jr. Hall of Famer so I think there's just two cards in there so we know what we got but I don't have any reason to open these yet or anywhere to put them they'll just kind of be in the way all right and um uh, just a couple things since I was going through some of my stuff last night um, I put some of these uh, cards that I had that I forgot to even get around to in uh, one touches so I had this just in a top loader and I'd like to keep my mini frame autograph cards in one touches because I'm a big fan of mini tobacco cards that's one I picked these next three are the ones I picked up in Albuquerque so that's the Berg. He builds card houses and buildings and stuff from like playing cards. So I got his autograph. That was super cheap. That was cool. I like the oddball stuff, people. All right. Next, I got the, um, the guy from Survivor, Bob Crowley. He won Survivor. So one of the world's champions of Survivor. And that's suiting for Alan Ginter as being the world champion set. So that's cool. Those were both 2009s. And then I showed this before the Wara. That card matches this frame pretty well. That's 2010 Alan and Ginter. And he is Hubertus, Master of Hellfire Wara. And he's like fire eating champion. So I want to touch those because. Much like mini cards, folks, in Alan and Ginter, but I do it probably for Gypsy Queen or any of those uh, mini frame stuff too. And then I recently picked up this tattoo artist, Belina, who uh, has a video nobody's watching, so just figured keep putting them out there so people get to see that. Um, got that off of eBay. All right, let's see. Then I'd show these McDonald's football cards, but from buddy Gerald Ford there. Hey, Gerald, there's a football card uh, for the ones that I showed before at the Super Bowl. Okie dokie, so let's get to it, folks. I'm going to do this here at eBay. It's going to be part of my PC. So, Kalamazoo, Alamagoo, Albuquerque Turkey. Boop. And I'm going to do it on these two. Oh, actually, I think I'm going to open this, but I'm going to show you these uh, Ziploc cards. Those are the ones I wanted to show you. So, <clears throat> then we'll get to eBay. So, I did pick this up at Lefty Sports Cards where I got the OVAC card. So, these are loose. So, let's take a look at these Ziploc oddball cards. A little jewel case here. Since I wasn't opening any of these things, the Denny's or any of that. 125th anniversary and I don't know who printed these cards but I guess it's just Dow brands because I don't see MSA or anything on these so this little set is a little off center but that's okay on these oddballs they're just typical 80's cardboard stock so Ziploc Willie Mays of course they're not like playing years or anything like that so Willie Howard Mays Jr. There you go. You can read about him there. So that's a pretty nice card. 
give him a moment in the limelight there folks let me switch my glasses because these ones I'm having trouble with all right that's a little better all right Willie don't touch my Willie if you don't know what that is you should look up that song it's pretty funny talked about it in the past and it's a funny joke if you're immature like me <laughs> all right Warren Spahn off centered there they really kind of got a glossy front and they really smooth and kind of that uh, cardboardy back like like those um tops uh you know like the all-star cards that came in the um rack packs so it's very similar to that so who knows maybe tops could have printed these for them but i don't think there's any way tops wouldn't have stuck their logo on there so mr warren spawn you can read about him pause these videos anywhere along the line if you want to read so hall of famer all right the first guy i ever met in person and got a celebrity autograph from was bob gibson that one's pretty nicely centered neat different image of old bob gibson there he was a pretty nice dude still got the ball that i haven't shown yet but we're getting around to all this stuff folks we're getting around to that stuff eventually but i've just got so much stuff i could show you things for 10 years probably and it'd probably take 10 years because i could put a one day video and it'd take me 10 years to talk about it <laughs> hall of famer raleigh fingers never uh got one of those raleigh packs the old roland glenn fingers and you can read about them there and zoom in here and see if we can get this to focus on the printing stuff down there there we go slowly jeez nab it dag it there we go so as you can see there you got career year and 92 dow brands all right and then all you red sox fans carl yastrzemski so i don't know how big this set is or if it's a complete set or not i just saw them in that jewel case and i didn't care i needed to have them because i don't have them and i love oddball stuff whether it's from the 90s the 80s or the 1880s or 19 teens or anything these are just what cards are to me originally so i have a great appreciation whether they're junk wax or not brooks robinson because anybody and everybody has tops so the great brooks robinson recently passed away rest in peace died around the same time my mom who i've talked about so rest in peace brooks robinson and my mom i miss you <clears throat> all right the great p Wee reese p Wee reese so yeah typical um 80s 90s hall of famer kind of sets and cards you know there's nothing spectacular about these other than i didn't have them all right here's a nice one <coughs> look at my boy willie mccovey anyone knows anything about these cards like who printed them you know is that tops incognito you know i'd sure like to hear so leave a comment all right all right black and white nelly fox for the socks the white socks there and that old white socks logo up there with the little mercury um wing on the white sock all right Jacob Nelson Fox is his real name from Pennsylvania there all right and the great Yogi Berra which I just showed you I picked up a relic of him from tops 206 so that's pretty sweet 
Everybody loves Yogi for the most part. I don't know anyone who doesn't. I wonder if he's a Cardinals or was a Cardinals fan. All right, and then the great Hank Aaron Goat. Mr. Hank Aaron. So I guess I could look up this set and uh, find out myself too. But if you want to leave a comment, let me know. So I could look up the set list, checklist, I should say. Set list is for concerts, right? Checklist is for baseball cards. All right. Jewel case a little too small for this set, but. All right, there you go. So, yeah. Cost a little bit of money, but no big deal. Yeah, it's neat to have another different set of oddball or some oddball cards that I didn't have before. All right. Um, I was planning on opening this here rack pack. Oh, well, my boy Andre Dawson on it, but I'm already at 26 minutes, so maybe I should just skip that and go straight into the eBay reveal. And, um,. Most people probably won't watch this video because they tend to skip this kind of stuff. Um, these kind of things that I'm interested in. Oddball, junk wax kind of oddballs. Like the Ziplocs and the milk phone cards. People are more into 50s and 60s stuff, I understand. And once again, that's why I started this channel. So I remember these from Topps Archives. And this is way back when. And um, I know there's been different ones that have done stuff similar, I think. Like the rookie cards that should have been or whatever. You know, they, they, they'll put out like a card that's like, oh, what they think somebody who had a bad rookie card had they done a proper rookie card. And they've had like reimagined ones and then this one's from archives and it's literally they just took his rookie card and took the image expanded it and put it onto a card if it was just his rookie so it's neat because this is part of his rookie original rookie card design it's just if he was alone instead of with other people and i believe this is 2000 one sorry folks I'm trying to see the date on here so tops reprint yeah 2001 I believe uh, but it's pretty cool yeah it's not the best looking thing ever not that it's a rookie card was but it's still pretty a little iconic to me but that's 473 77 rookie outfielders Andre Dawson, so it's just like what was on the back of his um, rookie card there. And so we could take a look here and see what that says. If we can get this thing to focus. Why am I having trouble tonight, folks? One day it works great, and then the next day it just will not cooperate. All right, so just really want to zoom in on that date, Dag Nabbit. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, 2001. So let's not play with that anymore. That's the 1977 Topps Chewing Gum. Andre Dawson um, had it just been him on his rookie card instead of the other three guys. Got that archive stamp there, 2001. So that, you know, it's still a little blurry because they took a smaller image and they blew it up to put this card out. So, I mean, it's not the best looking card ever, but it's cool. It's just neat, you know, what would have been. <laughs> Obviously, they left the outfielder, so they didn't even say, like, outfield. Um, so it's just you know, a clever little insert or something they did that year. And that's cool you know it's probably not going to be worth anything but it means a lot to me because of course Andre Dawson's my favorite player so I'm happy to have that so I ordered that from eBay it just took the guy like a month 
to get it to me so that's a little frustrating but it's in good shape you know so there's no like edging problems it's glossy so tops did I guess what they could without doing a what do you call it like a um, when they upgrade like a movie or something like like on YouTube it's processing up to HD or like they remaster there we go like remastering the image or something like that um, but still I think that's cool it wasn't a very expensive and it probably never have a lot of value but it's neat and that will fit right in my collection so it's a bit of an odd ish I wouldn't say odd ball but a little odd little thing that they done I've seen some of the reimagine if they did his rookie with a different image and all that from his rookie year different I don't know if it's different companies or different sets but I've seen that looked some that looked really cool so there you go for my uh, Dawson guys out there there's another Andre um, I don't think I have a whole lot more Andre stuff coming in so uh, this should start to um, slow down a bit until I find some of the um, short prints and variations and stuff that I'm looking for of him uh, but I got my autographs I've got my relics I've got um, some of those old cards that I never had or replace some of the ones that I got damaged so um, unless I come across some more oddball stuff or some of his like red hand number Brooklyn backs and stuff like that um, probably not going to be getting a whole lot more of him in the immediate future but I say that today and then I go online and <laughs> then everything's up in the air all right folks so yeah I'm going to go ahead and skip doing this here uh, Tops. It's already got that one out, and um, otherwise, we'd just be seeing what's in there. So, so, I don't really think I got any eBay coming either. So, I could save this for another video. So, anyways, um, thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, I picked this up yesterday. They were out there at the uh, Safeway down there in uh, Gilroy or Morgan Hill. And um, maybe it was Morgan Hill. And I saw the Girl Scout cookie people setting up when I was walking out of there. Uh, went in there and got a nice coffee and some Diet Dr. Peppers. And they were out there and so I picked this one up, which I like. They're pretty yummy, but then I got the Samoas or whatever they're called. I really like those. But six bucks now, people. So inflation's even hitting the girl scouts so there you go support your girl scouts i can't believe this kid though if she was this age she was wearing nails like that were like this long so oh boy all right folks but the pretty yummy stuff um keep your eyes peeled for the girl scouts out there when there's an idea what they're gonna run you about six bucks a box at least here in california so all right folks uh, i'll update you if i find anything about jury duty if i can get out of that for this time around and um thanks for watching my videos and thanks for all the commenters and subscribers and likes and john for uh the contest and um the gift card i really appreciate it folks and um Hey, good stuff. Talk to you later. Bye.